Welcome back everybody. Today we're getting into the Relia bolt. I'll show you here what exactly it is. But it's the bolt that's in this rifle right now. Some very interesting features on it. Um, it has some curved edges, some things that have been used by other companies. It's also made of a different steel that a lot of folks have tried out. Uh, companies had some success with. Um, but what we're going to do here is just keep putting rounds down range with it. Because obviously I can't test a like a 40,000 round test of it like, I, like the military could for their test. But... I can do what I can here, and that's what I'll do. So we'll keep putting a bunch of rounds through it. You can see there, steel cased right now. I believe it's Wolf in there. It's handling it just fine. So we'll continue the test and then step inside and let you guys know what I think of it and uh, some of the features of it coming up next. Through the magic of video editing, we've removed the bolt and stepped inside. Here we have uh, a close-up shot of it. You can see that it is uh, a little bit unique, like I mentioned earlier, and we'll go over a few uh, things that make this unique, but one of them is going to be the material. It's made out of S7 tool steel. Um, that is basically has some increases in certain types of strength versus uh, your 158 carpenter steel that you can see here on your screen. Of note, uh, this is not new to rifle bolts. Uh, Barrett has been using the S7 tool steel and uh, all of their 50 caliber rifles for a long time now, so it's certainly been uh, proven as a bolt material and obviously in some pretty high-end rifles, high-end high-power rifles. So um, using it in the AR may be a little bit new, but it has been used for a while for other uh, firearms bolt applications, I guess you could say. The S7 tool steel is uh, also coated with the NP3 uh, treatment here, so that's what gives it that nickel uh, type of, uh, brushed nickel, I should say, type of finish. Um, very high lubricity. It cleans up pretty easily. As you can see here, we have some uh, carbon built up there, but if I really wanted to, I'm sure I could get it off relatively easily. It will stain, though, over time. I have several of the uh, NP3 coated bolts, and they do kind of turn black. Um, with higher and higher round counts, so just something to note there. Um, the real big thing that's unique, I guess you could say, about this bolt is these cuts, though, that you see here on the lugs. Now, those cuts are there for a couple reasons. One thing they do is, uh, as the bolt is locking and unlocking during the firing cycle, uh, it reduces the shearing forces. At least they claim that it reduces the shearing forces as it goes throughout that motion. Now, um, I believe I've talked about in several Q&A vi uh, videos, people always ask what spare parts to get for your AR, and I will say a bolt because uh, the lugs do shear. That's what they do. Um, I've seen plenty of them in my day that have sheared off there. And I'll put a picture I ripped off the internet here just to show you guys um, what that looks like. But it absolutely will happen. Eventually, all bolts, even high-end bolts that are excellent bolts, will eventually shear. It's just the nature of the beast. Now, this claims to reduce those forces, um, which makes sense. If, if it's going you know, into the chamber, the star chamber, then extracting out, it's turning as it's doing that. So those... those uh, forces of shear are obviously going on a flat surface. This is a, a rounded surface, so it's going to reduce that force. I mean, it just makes sense. Whether or not, you know, that how much that impacts things over the lifespan of a bolt, who knows. We'll see that uh, in years to come as these bolts are used for higher and higher round counts, but that is the theory there. One added benefit, at least in my mind, that I can think of is the AR obviously uh, tends to foul relatively easily. So when it's going in and out, it's also going to allow for that the carbon buildup that's in there, maybe dirt, whatever the case may be, water, um, to be pushed out of the way and sort of let the bolt go home and uh, make sure you get it uh, locked in properly. So um, that's also something that, in my mind, could certainly be a benefit to these uh, these rounded lug surfaces. The bolt is also magnetic particle inspected, high pressure tested, as well as being shot peened. Um, it is heat treated. Now, one thing that I talked to the folks over at Sharps about is their heat treating process. And they mentioned that they did make a proprietary way to treat the S7 steel. So it's not just like they're not just bringing over the process from 158 and putting it on here. Uh, they developed a specific way to do it. Um, for this type of steel, which in my opinion is a good thing because what works for one steel won't necessarily work for another. Ask any tool manufacturer, they'll certainly uh, verify that claim. Uh, now the bolt, as I understand it now, ships with um, the O-ring as well as the black insert. Mine, as you can see here, does not have the black insert. If my camera will focus, and there you go. Um, does not have the black insert. However, this is a relatively old bolt, if you will, um, and they do, they do now have that. So. I believe this one is from the second batch or the second run of these bolts that were actually commercially available. So I've had it for, for a good while now. 
Probably the most important spec that I haven't mentioned so far is going to be pricing. I believe the MSRP on this sucker is $119, but as of today, as of the filming of this video, uh, they're selling for $80. So certainly not the cheapest bulb on the market, that's for sure. Um, as to whether or not you need it, who knows. But uh, S7, like I mentioned, has been used in bolts for a while. I believe uh, Spikes actually looked at using the S7 as well due to its uh, strength properties. However, I think they found that in some testing, I believe extreme cold weather testing, it became brittle. I mean extreme like negative 40 degrees. Now keep in mind that your O-ring on your extractor I believe is rated to negative 15. So other things start failing at that point as well. But I believe Spikes abandoned it for that reason. Now the vast majority of us will never ever see those temperatures. I won't. If it's that cold, I'm not going outside. It's not happening. So uh, I'm not worried about it. But it's just sort of a side note there on the S7. Um, but other than that, it seems to do really well. Um, I've put about 600 rounds through mine at this point um, in two different barrels. Headspace has been great in both. No issues there. And um, really not a whole lot else to say. I mean, do you need it to have a reliable... Uh, AR. Absolutely not. There's there's good bolts that have used the traditional mill spec design with mill spec materials. However, um, in the past 10 to 15 years, there's been some developments that have certainly been improvements on the mill spec, in my opinion. Um, is this one? I think time will really ultimately tell. As of right now, zero issues with it, so it's certainly looking good. But if you guys have any questions about this bolt, anything else I talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page, as always. But thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video.